Humans are extremely curious species, who are eager to discover new things and conquer challenges. An extremely attractive challenge that has been attracting mankind today is to conquer outer space and planets in the solar system. Maybe this sounds crazy if you hear someone say for the first time that they want to go to the moon. That will get crazier when the moon is no longer a target to conquer, but Mars is. That's right, you didn't hear me wrong. Colonizing Mars is the ambition of Elon Musk, CEO of SpaceX, one of the leading space companies today. To achieve this goal, SpaceX must at least reimagine current technologies while inventing new ones. That's why Elon Musk and SpaceX created Starship. One of the indispensable parts of Starship to conquer orbit is the Raptor engine. This methane-powered engine could single-handedly enable Elon Musk's plan to go to Mars in 2024. One more important milestone that Elon Musk and SpaceX are 100% focused on right now is the first orbital flight of Starship SN20 and BN3 in early July, which is the first step closer to the goal, make humans a multiplanetary species. In today's episode, we're going to discuss a component that determines whether 90% of SN20 and BN4 can reach orbit or not. That's the Raptor engine. Not to be confused with the Merlin engines that SpaceX uses on the Falcon 9 reusable rockets for its current launch, the Raptor engines are being specially developed for SpaceX's Starship and its Super Heavy Booster Stage rocket. This is a sneak peek into the groundbreaking engineering behind SpaceX Raptor engines. So what kind of Raptor engines will SN20 and BN3 use? What are the biggest differences between the SN20 and BN4 Raptor engines compared to the rest of the SN prototype generations? Why SpaceX has confidently conducted the first orbital flight test after the historic success of SN15? Along with many other interesting questions, First of all, what are the biggest differences between the SN20 and BN4 Raptor engines compared to the rest of the SN prototype generations? SpaceX has tested Raptors in multiple prototypes from SN8 to SN11, despite having gone through a lot of failed tests. But on May 5, SN15 made history when it successfully landed after a high-altitude test. It is the result of perseverance and continuous improvement with hundreds of different improvements on the SN15. After the success of SN15, SpaceX has confidently advanced to the first polite flight into the orbit of the Starship SN20 and 4 and skipped the prototype generations from SN6 to SN19. One of the most notable parts of the Starship SN20 will be the use of three Raptor engines and three Arbots engines. Raptor Vacuum, also Arbots, is a variant of Raptor with an extended, regeneratively cooled nozzle for higher specific impulse in vacuum conditions. While the optimized Raptor vacuum engine is aiming for an ISB of 380 S, 3,700 meters per second, the V1.0 Raptor Vac designed to support early Starship development has been made more efficient and is projecting an ISP of only 365 to 370 S, 3,580 to 3,630 meters per second. In addition, Raptor Vacuum V1 will have a smaller engine nozzle in order to avoid flow separation when the engine is fired at sea level atmospheric pressure. A full duration test of version 1 of the Raptor Vacuum engine was completed in September 2020 at the SpaceX Development Facility in McGregor, Texas. McGregor is used for the research and development of new rocket engines and thrusters as well as for testing final manufactured engines, various components, and engines during development. Although SpaceX manufactures all of their rocket engines and thrusters at their Hawthorne headquarters, each must pass through McGregor where the company tests each new engine off of the assembly line as well as those being developed for future missions to orbit and beyond, before each one can be used on a flight mission. Extensive and repeated rocket engine testing is a key to increasing reliability and thereby mission success while lowering the operating costs for SpaceX. SpaceX is accelerating the progress of its orbital flight, SpaceX is also taking delivery of the first Raptors for future orbital flights. About 10 days ago when Raptor engines 72 and 74 were delivered to Boca Chica many believe they will be used for orbital flight as SN20 and BN3. Every time a new generation of Raptor engines comes out, they look better and better. We can find many differences here. The plumbing is almost entirely different. Fuel and oxidizer turbo pumps look roughly the same but that's about it. Everything else has been moved around, made more compact, more streamlined. And all this in just 30 engines constructed. And we can expect more exciting news from SpaceX in the coming months as they perfect the Raptor engine to take us to the fire of the stars. There's a bit of fun here. Have you ever been curious about the history of rockets? Oh, they can be traced back to the medieval ages. Then rockets were being developed all over the world and used as weapons. And with the Cold War fueling the space race, a new era of technological development was upon the field of rocketry. But this was a difficult task. 
And then on October 4, 1957, the Sputnik rocket from the USSR broke from Earth's gravity to deliver the first-ever artificial satellite called the Sputnik 1. The USA followed suit with the development of its Saturn V rocket, which would take the first people to the moon. As time went on other countries started like China, the EU Space Agency, and India joining in with other indigenous rocket designs. All specifically designed for one purpose and one purpose only to break away from Earth's gravity. Now, back to the main topic. As we mentioned in the opening about the mission to Mars, SpaceX CEO and chief designer Elon Musk set his goals from the very beginnings of the company in 2002, initiating a stepwise process beginning with uncrewed flights of the small Falcon 1 before upgrading to commercial missions with the larger Falcon 9 to be followed by crewed flights to near-Earth space and heavy lift missions of the Falcon Heavy including the first precursor missions to Mars. However, missions to explore and settle on Mars will require a much more powerful rocket with several times the thrust of SpaceX's Falcon Heavy. The SpaceX Raptor is a cryogenic staged combustion rocket engine intended to power the high-performance lower and upper stages for the interplanetary transport system, it has more than three times the thrust of SpaceX's Merlin 1D engines propelling the Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy rockets and steps away from a kerosene-based propellant. In choosing a methane-fueled engine designed for Raptors, SpaceX stepped away from the well-proven kerosene LOX combination used on the company's Merlin engine series. Methane-fueled engines are a relatively new development in rocketry, being actively pursued by SpaceX's Raptor, Blue Origin's BE-4, Airbus Saffron launchers, and different Russian proposals. SpaceX's Raptor employs a full-flow staged combustion cycle, a variation of a closed-cycle engine that is designed to create a more benign environment within the engine plumbing, an important aspect for reusability and also provides higher efficiency than the open-cycle engines previously developed by SpaceX. Raptor employs boost pumps on both the fuel and oxidizer sides that operate at a slower speed than the main pumps and create engine inlet pressure sufficient for the operation of the turbopumps. Typically, boost pumps are driven by tap-off gas from the main pumps, but the exact design used by the Raptor has not been publicly shared. The full-flow engine design has a number of advantages over typically staged combustion engines, first and foremost a higher performance but also factoring in reliability and reuse considerations. Higher performance is achieved by injecting the propellants into the combustion chamber in a gaseous phase, creating a more rapid reaction. Furthermore, the full-flow cycle provides the option of easily integrating an autogenous tank pressurization system, which would eliminate the need for a helium pressurization system, which undoubtedly caused many headaches at SpaceX during the teething issues encountered by the Falcon 9. The Raptor's chamber pressure of 300 bar is the highest among all active launch vehicle engines. Russian engine designs were known to be using the highest chamber pressures for decades owed to advances in metallurgy that allowed for the use of oxygen-rich staged combustion, a technology only recently mastered by U.S. manufacturers. However, even Russian engines cannot come close to Raptor with RD-191 operating at 262.6 bar and the RD-180 used on the Atlas V that reaches a maximum pressure of 267 bar. Raptor competes favorably with its direct competition, notably Blue Origin's BE-4 that represents the second high-thrust methane engine developed on U.S. soil. BE-4 employs an oxygen-rich staged combustion cycle and achieves a baseline sea level thrust of 2,450 kN, though that number may rise as BE-4 heads into development testing. That is all the information for today. If you want to show us that you enjoyed today's video, please subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell so you'll know when we upload new content. See you in the next episode.